And let's wrap things up with our radar tracking problem. So down below it says radar detects two airplanes at the same altitude. Their polar coordinates are 8 miles, 110 degrees, and 5 miles, 15 degrees. So we could refer to this as, say, R1 theta 1 and R2 theta 2. <clears throat> now, given that we're talking about distance, I think it's pretty reasonable for you guys to assume that there might be some formula. You know, we've got this distance formula in Cartesian coordinates or rectangular coordinates, so why wouldn't it exist in polar as well? And certainly it does. That's something that you guys could actually derive using some of the, the um, options that we've, we've kind of worked with here lately. But I think what you're going to find is that uh, there's actually another option, and it's, it's one using a formula you've seen quite a bit lately, that, that's very accessible in a problem like this. So why don't we take a moment and just kind of sketch out the problem. I think sometimes it's helpful to consider where we're working. So it says 8 miles, 110 degrees, 5 miles, and 15 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and start off by just looking over a pretty standard sort of xy axis and considering what an overlay of polar coordinates would look like here. So in the case of 8, 110, I could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we obviously know that we're thinking about uh, polar coordinates as sort of a series of concentric circles, right? You guys have seen this with some, uh, some well, radar or sonar in the past. Um, <clears throat> so as we consider this first one, it's got a much, much larger radius than the second. The second just goes out to a radius of 5. And therefore, it will look, oh, something like this, okay? <clears throat> now, um, this may actually be enough for you to realize uh, a really important idea from geometry. i got to say it doesn't pertain particularly uh, well to this particular problem, but I, I just think it's such a cool concept. And that was the, uh, the square cube law. You may notice that this is actually over half the radius of the larger circle, and yet its actual area is significantly less than half the radius of the original. And that's because area being two-dimensional and length uh, being one-dimensional tells us that they don't actually scale in quite the same way. There's sort of a, uh, a, a particular power that you have to work off of there. So it's kind of a cool way to kind of see it in real life. And this is the reason why some people will even calculate that for pizzas. How much is the actual cost per square inch? So, I don't know, a random extra connection for the day, I guess. Uh, but when you're looking these two over, and we've got 8 miles and 110 degrees, 5 miles and 15 degrees, um, why don't we sketch out roughly where those would be? So 8 miles, 110 is going to be, I think this is pretty reasonable. So from 0, 0, and 5 miles, 15, um, that's going to take us, oh, maybe about here. Also seems reasonable. And now let's think about what we're actually asked to find. Um, we're looking for this distance between the two, this sort of green segment length. So we've effectively created a triangle. And because we're working in polar coordinates, we actually know what these distances are. We don't have to use some formula to find them with respect to the origin. They were given to us. This is 8 miles, and this is 5 miles. Um, now likewise, because we're looking for that missing side length, why don't I go ahead and call that A? We're looking for what A would be. Well. You, you may notice we've worked with triangles so much lately that we could actually state what this angle is kind of between these, in, uh, these two sides, the 5 and the 8. Um, given that that's 110 and this is 15, we could say that this is 95 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and call that one alpha. We'll call this one B. We'll call this one C, just using our typical setup for the law of sines and cosines. Okay? So now, uh, given that we have an angle and uh, the sides that that I kind of create it, that include it, uh, we can go ahead and set up the law of cosines here. And now replacing those, you'll notice what we're going to get is a squared is equal to, we get 64 plus 25 minus 2 times 8 times 5 is going to be minus 80 times cosine of alpha, which is 95 degrees, 95 degrees. And before you uh, run through the, the actual work here, just make sure that you are working in degrees, okay? Um, if you leave it in radians from the work up above, you'll run into some problems. So there we go. We've got 95.97. And then when we take the square root of both sides, we're going to get 9.797. So those are our kind of final results there. We've got the square of the side length. And then we have the side itself. Okay. 
And it's always good to do sort of a mental check. We know that 95 will automatically be the largest angle in any triangle, and then, then therefore it must be across from the longest side, and this certainly is bigger than 8 and 5. Okay, so there we have it. All right, well, good luck on your assignment. Please feel free to work together uh, with any time you have in class, and let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you.